Topaz Denoise AI is one of the most powerful pieces of noise reduction software in the market. This program uses artificial intelligence to get rid of the noise while keeping the detail, which is the real key of this program. I'm a professional landscape astrophotographer and I usually shoot at high ISOs, like when I do Milky Way, Northern Lights, or any type of low light photography. It's normal for me to shoot at ISO like 3200, 6400 and sometimes higher, which usually you know, results in very noisy images. I started using Topaz the Noise AI years ago and it was a real game changer in my photography. From that time I stopped using the Lightroom and Photoshop noise reduction because this was much more advanced. So in this video I want to show you how to use Topaz the Noise AI, what's my recommended workflow, all the interface and a few examples. And that way you'll see a complete review on Topaz the Noise AI. So let's jump into it. So the first thing you have to do to use Topaz Denoise AI is to download the software. Go to Topaz Denoise AI and to the download section, uh, you can find this in the link in the description. And from here, there's a, you know, a download page with all the software from Topaz. Go to Topaz Denoise AI and just choose your operating system, either Windows or Mac. After installing the software, this can take a few minutes. Open the program and you will see a new pop-up screen where the software will require you to enter your details if you purchase a Topaz Denoise AI or to start your free 30-day trial version. I highly recommend downloading the trial version, it's 100% free and that way you can test the software in your images before doing any purchase. After this, there are three main ways to use Topaz Denoise AI. The first is the standalone version, which is the easiest, you just have to open the software drag your images or open your images and you can start using Topaz Denoise AI either with your normal files or with your raw files. Second option is using Lightroom. Uh, Topaz Denoise AI has a plugin for Lightroom and it's super easy to use. And the third option is to use Photoshop. This is my preferred option because I usually like combining Topaz Denoise AI with the masking and selections from Photoshop. Uh, that's the way I'm gonna show you the software today, but just bear in mind that there are three main ways to use Topaz Denoise AI. So if you're using Lightroom very quickly, here we can jump into the screen, and we're gonna use uh, this image for the test for today. But basically from Lightroom, it's super easy. Just right click, go to edit in, and select Topaz Denoise AI. Here, I recommend using edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments and make sure that in the copy file options dropdown, you have the selected options. My recommendation is uh, working as a TIFF, color space, you can select whatever you prefer. By default, it will be Pro Photo RGB. Um, bit depth, it will be by default 16 bit depth, which is my recommendation. Resolution, 300 bit depth, and no compression. Once this is ready, just hit edit and Topaz Denoise AI will be open, finish your adjustments, and then the image will be open again in Lightroom as a TIFF. If you are using Photoshop, the process is also very easy. Uh, for this uh, Topaz Denoise AI review, I'm gonna show you this example. I captured this image last May in Monument Valley, and the settings for this uh, Milky Way image were 11 seconds, f2.2, and ISO 6400. As you see, there is a ton of noise in the image, both in the foreground, and in the sky, but especially in all the foreground. So I'm gonna use this example to use Topaz Denoise and see how it works. Um, to use uh, Topaz Denoise AI in Photoshop, right click, go to edit in, and edit in Photoshop. Or you can just use uh, Camera Raw and open the image directly into Photoshop. Here we got the image. And once I have the image in Photoshop, the first thing we have to do is to duplicate the image. So I can hit Command J, to duplicate and that way I can you know fine-tune the adjustments later and then go to filter Topaz Labs and Topaz Denoise AI now the software is gonna load in a few seconds and you'll see something like this one of the things I like most about Topaz Denoise AI is how easy and straightforward is the interface there are just a few adjustments that you need to learn and it's very simple uh, first of all, um, before jumping into any editing, um, I want to show you a couple of tricks uh, with Topaz Denoise so it works smoother in your computer. And that's also one of the things I want to remark. Uh, Photoshop Denoise AI, 
the same as uh, most of the noise reduction software in the market, is very graphically demanding. So if you're using an older computer, you might experience very slow times in this software. So I highly recommend using a computer that with at least like eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM memory. And the faster the computer, the better for using this software. In any case, if you're using a slower computer, you can still use Topaz Denoise AI, but I recommend fine tuning a couple of adjustments as I will show you now. So go to Topaz Denoise AI, Preferences, and now here in the Processing and Save, there are different options. Here in the AI processor, depending on your computer, you will see different um, options available. There will be like an auto option, this will be enabled by default. And then there will be a CPU option, which is uh, in most of the computers uh, is probably the best. And on, in some computers, like for example in my MacBook Pro, I have the Apple M1 Max chip. Uh, this depends on your computer. Usually I leave this by default, so the software can decide which is better. But depending on your computer, you can choose whatever is best for you. In the allow memory consumption, when you're in the CPU, here you can select if you want high, medium, or low. This depends again on your computer. If you're using an older computer, I recommend setting low. If you're using a relatively modern computer, you can set medium. If you have a very new and advanced computer, you can use high. This will make a big difference in the processing times and in how smooth the software works. So I'm going to leave this selected by default because uh, in my case it works very uh, very fast as you will see now. And then in the application we can uh, customize a few options like the background color, the panel selection. And one very important is the auto update preview. This is very important especially if you're using again an older computer because it can run very slow. If you this is enabled by default, as it is now, uh, when I'm applying any noise reduction and I move through the image, the noise reduction is automatically applied. So here, for example, I'm moving here, and as you see, the noise reduction is automatically applied. So as I scroll through the image, it will be automatically applied. In my case, it runs super fast, as you can see in the loading time here. But if your computer is very slow and you start moving, the software is gonna get stuck. So what I recommend doing is going to preferences again and disabling this if your computer runs very slow. In my case, I'm gonna leave this enabled. Once this is ready, we're gonna start checking the interface, which again is super simple. On the top bar, we have different options. The first is uh, if you click on the original, you will toggle between the image without adjustments or with adjustment. So here, for example, you will see the before and after. On the right side, there are different pre-visualizing options. The single view, which is the one by default, which is my normal image. Then we have a split view, which is one of my favorites. Here you can basically see the before and after. I'm gonna hit another mode here just so you can see the difference. Then we have another side-by-side -side view. And finally, a comparison view, which I will explain to you later, which is probably my favorite, because you can compare very, very quickly the different modes. Uh, then you have here a magnifying, so you can see the different options. You can either zoom to fit, or apply as 50%, or 100% zoom. Um, I recommend applying 100% zoom, so you can see the details very clearly. So that's my recommended option. Then on the right side, here we have a preview so we can navigate through the image and then here we can compare the different AI models and this is the key in Topaz Denoise comparing to other noise reduction software like Lightroom Photoshop which are more limited. Here there are different AI models and we can apply different noise reduction models depending on your shot. So for example the first one is standard and this is uh, the latest model developed by Topaz Denoise AI and it works really really well in you know generally in most of the images. Uh, it reduces the noise, keeps the detail and as I said it's more like a generic mode. The second is clear. This works very well when we have like rounder or smooth surfaces like water, clouds or things like that. Uh, it doesn't work very well for night or low light images so I don't recommend using those in low light. Um, the third is low light. Um, this is designed specifically for night or low light images and it does a very good job as you see reducing the noise but in my experience the best noise reduction AI model for uh, night images like Milky Way Northern Lights is the severe noise. This uh, software works wonder this model and as you see it absolutely reduces the noise while keeping the detail. 
finally we had the raw model and this is just for raw files this is not a raw file this is just a t version because i'm using now um, the software in photoshop but you can use directly your raw file into denoise ai and work there um, personally i don't like this model at all i find many issues because uh, topaz applies a specific uh, color profile so you'll probably see like a strange colors and sometimes even artifacts so i don't recommend using this model with topaz denoise ai probably it will be improved in the future but as of right now i don't really like this uh this model in order to use the different models and adjustments, uh, the quickest way to do it is using this uh, recommended automatically mode. Uh, the software automatically analyzes your image, the noise, the patterns, and then recommend one specific AI model. In this case, for example, it's recommended a standard. And you know, sometimes it can be helpful, but in any case, I recommend you know testing the different AI models for yourself because there is no general rule. Every image is different, every noise pattern is different, and you'll have to test. In this case, for example, I think that severe noise works better. So, you know, this is just like a general reference. In the general model preferences or adjustments, you can decide the noise uh, reduction. Here, even like a small tiny amount of noise reduction is very powerful. So I recommend applying, you know, just a tiny bit. And with the enhanced sharpness, you can apply a bit more. There is no drastic difference, so I usually apply like high levels, like even 80, 100. Just make sure that there are no artifacts in your image. Then we have some post-processing adjustments, which is mostly the recover original detail. This is again to recover more details in your image. And the color noise reduction, if there is like a ton of uh, color noise in your shot. Um, again, you can apply some automatic adjustments here, as the software recommends. But in any case, I recommend again, you know, using manual adjustments. So I usually turn this off and just apply the adjustments that I can think, you know, that are better. So usually a small noise reduction and more sharpness. In recover detail, I do the same thing. And color noise reduction, there is not much color noise in this image, so I can leave like a lower level. Uh, I recommend you always uh, selecting an area in your image when you have, for example, the sky and your foreground, and that way you can see better the effect. Now, my best recommendation to compare the different models is to use a comparison view, and this is a game changer. So here, for example, I can select in the first square, I can click, and this is going to be the standard. I can select this to be the standard model. Second, for example, is going to be the clear. The third, I click, and this is going to be the low light. And the fourth is going to be the severe noise. And now I can compare very easily the four different AI models. As you see, um, the standard is very good, but I can still see a little bit of noise and even some artifacts in the image. Clear is obviously the worst. It actually changed the colors. Low light is probably the second best. I can see a very nice noise reduction and preserving detail. But to me, the best is severe noise. As you see here, it's leaving the image perfectly clean with detail and this is going to be my best noise reduction model in this case once you have the best noise reduction selected you can actually compare different sections just in case and see the different effects if you are happy with the results you can hit the apply button or if you want to apply the adjustments locally you can select this button here to selectively the noise or image which is basically masking with this panel you can paint an area all this in for example, in the red color, where you want to apply the noise reduction. Here, there are different adjustments for the masking, like the opacity, the overlay color, and different options. So you can apply the noise reduction only to specific areas, like the Milky Way, the foreground, or just certain areas with more noise. My recommendation is to do this more locally in Photoshop. Um, the noise this masking works great right in Topaz Denoise, but Photoshop always offer more advanced um, adjustment when it comes to masking. So that's why I always 100% use my noise reduction with Topaz Denoise in Photoshop. So I'm gonna clear the mask because I don't want to use it. And then once I'm happy with my noise reduction, again, I hit apply and get back to Photoshop to see the before and after. So the process is loading there on the right side. I just see it very quickly. And now here I have my new layer, my noise reduction. So let's see that before and after in different areas. For example, this area here in the foreground with the butte. As you see, there was a ton of noise 
and topaz is eliminating all the noise while preserving all the fine detail in the rocks. Here, for example, in the Milky Way core, here where we have the Lagoon Nebula or the horse, you can see a ton of detail as well, especially in this area in the shadows. And as you see, all the noise is gone. If you go to the foreground, you're going to see a more drastic difference because the noise here is more noticeable. So here, for example, there is a ton of digital noise and all this is eliminated. And the nice thing is how well Denoise AI preserves all the details. As you see here, and I usually scroll through my image. And if I see, for example, artifacts or a strange uh, noise reductions in some areas, I can just create a mask and mask out the effect in those specific areas. Now I want to show you a few more examples, um, reducing the noise using Topaz Denoise AI. This one, for example, um, is a very good example because there is a ton of noise and with different textures. So for example, we have here water, vegetation, smoke from the fumaroles, mountains, and then the stars in the Milky Way. So after applying Topaz Denoise AI using the same uh, workflow that I did before, here you can see the difference. So all the water is perfectly clean now with all the reflection. The foreground with the vegetation has all the details. Also the fumaroles in this case that, you know, usually this kind of um, soft, smooth elements are the, the ones with more noise. And also the mountains. So if you will look at the mountain, zooming in, you can see a drastic difference and the same for the sky. Another example, this is um, the Bristol Compine in the California Sierra. Here I took this image using, an, again, a very high ISO, like 6400. And if you zoom in the tree, you can see a ton of luminant noise. Also in the vegetation. And again, using Topaz Denoise AI and looking at the tree. As you see, we are eliminating the noise while keeping all the detail in the bark and in the roots of the tree. Also in all this vegetation here. So again, it's doing a phenomenal job at reducing the noise here. One last example, and this is one of my favorite types of photography, Northern Lights. Here, we always have to shoot at a very high ISO, otherwise the Aurora looks very fuzzy. So to capture the movement of the Aurora, I was shooting at a very, very high ISO, like 12800. And as you see here, there is a ton of noise throughout the image. So reflection, the sky, the eyes, everything. Again, applying the noise AI, and looking at the difference here the icebergs don't have any noise but are preserving the detail all the reflection and if we look at the aurora in the sky there is a drastic difference like for example here where we have some clouds drastic difference in quality and in the general overall feeling and look of the image Regarding the workflow recommendation, and this is very important, when to apply Denoise AI, it depends on what the software you're working with. So for example, if you are using any raw editor like Lightroom Capture One, you should do your normal editing, applying your adjustments, your local adjustment, masking, whatever you do in Lightroom, and then applying Denoise AI at the end of the post-processing. So whenever you finish your image, jump into Topaz Denoise AI and then apply it. The reason for this is because you want to apply all the adjustments in Lightroom in the raw file and then using Topaz Denoise just at the end of the workflow. However, if you're using Photoshop like I do, you always have to apply Denoise AI at the beginning of the workflow. So what I do is doing first the blending or whatever I need to do to create my image. And then when, once I have my base image, I apply the noise AI. That way I can make sure that I'm not enhancing the noise because if you apply the noise reduction at the end and you are starting working with a noisy image, it's very likely that you will have started enhancing the noise as well as the detail. So always apply Dino's AI at the beginning of your workflow, and then you will see how your image is getting better and better as you edit. Talking now about the price of Topaz Dino's AI is $79, which I consider to be a fair price, considering how advanced the software is and being a lifetime license. Um, you can also get the program at a reduced price if you get a bundle from Topaz, getting, for example, Dino's AI with Sharpen AI or with Gigapixel AI, which are also very nice uh, pieces of software that I recommend. 
So there are different options that you can get, but in any case, the price I think is fair considering all that is included in the software. Lastly, to summarize everything with the pros and cons of Topaz in Noise AI, Talking about the pros, I will say that the main is that you can effectively and very easily reduce the noise in your images while preserving the detail. And as I said at the beginning, this is the real key, keeping the detail while you reduce the noise. Secondly, what I love about Topaz Denoise AI is the different AI models. There are five different AI models, so it doesn't matter the type of images that you are using, there's gonna be always one model that's gonna work very well with your images. And using the comparison view, it's very easy to select which is the best one for your shot. Another couple of nice things about Topaz Denoise AI is that they offer a 30-day free trial, so just download the software, give it a try, and if you don't like it, that's fine. And lastly, there is our great customer service. I've been in touch with their customer service for a few years now to fine tune. Sometimes I had issues when they were releasing new versions and I had to fine tune their on my computer and they were very responsive, very helpful. So that's something I consider a very nice uh, from Topaz. And talking now about the cons, there are two main cons for me when using Topaz in Noise AI. First, it's very graphically demanding, so if you're using an older computer, you might experience some slower times. Just make sure that you toggle the functions in the preferences as I showed you in the, in the tutorial, and that way you will run a bit faster. Secondly, and this is something relatively new, Topaz now is charging uh, for the updates after one year. So after one year using Topaz in Noise AI, if you want to update the software, you need to pay for the new updates. Um, of course, the price is lower, it's just like an upgrade uh, price, but that's something that probably could be included. Lastly, the raw model support is not fine-tuned yet. I'm sure that they are working on that now, and um, probably we'll see a better raw function in the future, but that doesn't personally affect me because I use Photoshop, and I don't really need to apply the noise reduction in my raw files. So as a conclusion, Topaz in Noise AI is a phenomenal program and in my experience is the best noise reduction software in the market. I'm an astrophotography freak and I'm testing new software every day and I recently ran a comparison with the best noise reduction software in the market. Not only the Noise AI but also like DxO Pro Route 2, um, All One, No Noise, uh, Define, Lightroom Photoshop, Capture One, Luminar, you name it, all the best software. I run a comparison with all of them using the same image, and Topaz the Noise AI stood out from the rest. You can actually see the results in this article that I'm linking here, and see it for, by yourself. You will see how the noise is eliminating and preserving the detail much better than in other software. I highly recommend downloading the 30-day free trial version and test it by yourself. Just apply to some of your images and see how it works in your computer. I hope you liked this uh, Denoise AI review. If you want to purchase this software, you can find the link in the description. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments.